and uh, continuing our session on concurrency and databases, Raghu is going to talk to us on concurrency, where to draw the lines. Um, so the bad news is, we still have one more talk, but the good news is, is this is a one idea talk. <laughs> and so it was going to be one idea and then like 20 minutes of filler, and I'm just going to skip the filler. So. <laughs> You let us fill. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, this is actually, you know, this is a good transition from sort of structured to unstructured. Um, basic idea is to sort of um, abstract a little bit from recent experiences with Java, and not so recent, but lots of experiences with concurrency. Um, say something about where the options are, and um, and raise questions, not give answers about about all of these, and all the selected background. You'll never see it. <laughs> Seven slides to go. Keep counting. <laughs> um, this is this is the main one. Um, so I've been in concurrent concurrency a lot of time, a, a long time. So you want to trust my judgment on this. <laughs> no matter what you tell people about how they write concurrent programs, they will adopt all sorts of different styles, and some of them will create absolutely wonderful, beautiful, stellar, high quality systems. That is a fact. So Java has embedded in it sort of this threads and monitor style. You see these days a lot more reliance on a style that's not very directly supported, but still pretty easy in Java, and much easier after JSR 166 and Java Util concurrent stuff, of asynchronous task frameworks. Asynchronous tasks are sort of a pleasant way to, to do a lot of concurrent programming. The idea is keep feeding tasks into some execution engine, which is probably a thread pool or something behind it. And, um, and you see, probably ne nearly all server-side Java uses this little design pattern. And it used to be just sort of a little painful, and you know, now we made life better for those people by making it very simple. It's a one-liner to do that now, and it used to be painful. Um, a lot of people doing optimistic stuff. I'm a, I'm a uh, I'm a big fan of lock-free synchronization. I you know when my 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 main joy in life is inventing weight-free algorithms, and so there's you know there's this whole category of people that that do this sort of very intricate, cool, non-blocking, no no weight states, no synchronization stuff, um, and that's that's an audience. That's a, that's a style of concurrent programming that you don't want to legislate away, especially this, because it's just very fast and efficient <coughs> and scalable and so on. Um, a whole, so almost all middleware is based on some sort of message passing style, and that was, that's a, just a style of concurrent programming. The concurrent programming that supports the middleware is generally some sort of async messaging Lots of variants, but you know that's just the, the design patterns these people use. Um, workflow, you know, is, is a lot of us hope that if people are going to latch on to sort of simple, nice ways of doing concurrent programming, it's just our really good luck that somehow by by weird accident, BPEL turned out to be pretty good. It's this uh, XML-based way of describing concurrency across. Um, across nodes. It's uh, concurrent, it's distributed, it's, it's also sort of got this sort of cluster-based um, subset of it. Um, it's a very different style of programming than any of the others. Um, there's a classic sort of OS view of concurrency. Um, you know, concurrency is lots of semaphores and monitoring and so on. Um, a whole style of high-performance parallelism, um, fork join frameworks, and bulk parallel, bulk synchronous parallel. Um, and as we just heard, the whole transactional school of, of you know, databases by somehow or another doing transactions. And as Ben mentioned, you know, really a lot of uh, mindset saying, hey, that's a really good idea. We should, we should make people program that way by putting it in our languages too. And the big moral is you really can't legislate this. Um, people will do all this stuff. Concurrent programming is not a little thing. It's a big thing. It's a, it's a whole bunch of styles. It's just as diverse as sequential programming. Um, so the question is, well, how do you support this? And um, the, the issues that come into play is, well, you 
concurrency support has this really fractal nature to it that exactly the same sort of issues happen when if you're a chip designer, if you're a hardware system designer, if you're an OS designer, a VM designer, library middleware, large scale components and applications, they all are facing very similar issues. And so and so this this is this is a case where it's very hard to find out where the lines are, to see where the lines are. Um, so at each of these stages, there, the processor has some ordering its consistency model. It has some guarantees about what's atomic and what's not atomic. It has to do something to decide to do, figure out what to do about waiting. Waiting is a bad thing, especially if you're a chip. You know? and, uh, and you know, all these guys, they put a lot of effort to, to not wait. Um, task switching of not doing something, but instead doing something else. Notifying, pumping out some sort of thing, um, you know, at, at systems level, uh, notifications for cache consistency are, you know, classic concurrent programming issues settled in a, a fairly, uh, fairly restricted way. And uh, increasingly, this sort of int introspective aspect uh, just goes everywhere. Um, increasingly, you need to know what's up. Um, increasingly, you need to know, uh, you know, what, what, what tasks are stalled in line. Um, so this makes it all sort of interesting in that uh, you see the same issues over and over again. Here's, I'm, I could have made lots of slides of these, and I just settled on one set that sort of tells a little story in the blue sentences. Um, so you try to design high-performance, scalable systems. And that's sort of the baseline here. Um, I'm assuming you want, you want to take advantage of lots of processors. So how do you do it? Well, rule number one is doing something's better than doing nothing. <laughs> um, stalling does nobody any good. Don't block threads. Threads don't like to block. CPUs don't like to stop what they're doing. You know, it's just wasted time. It's one of the main simple performance goals of parallel, concurrent, distributed, remote programming is just don't wait so much. <laughs> That's not quite true if what you're doing is incorrect. <laughs> Wait, we're All right. Late. Well, I have two unlesses, but I should have added that one too. Yes. Yeah. The, the first unless is, well, don't do something that's bound to fail and hurts everybody else. So, hard spinning is a bad idea. Right. So you learn that pretty quick too, and and then you say, well, okay. Well, sometimes there's really nothing to do. And the chip designers got this right. They said, hey, let's slow down the CPU when that happens. If there's really nothing to do, how about we don't do stuff so much? Um, this is something that really doesn't have a good analog at higher levels, but it ought to. It would make our lives so much better. Um, especially when we're going to have, you know, eight-way eight, uh, um, processors per chip. Right? It's, uh, some of them really aren't going to be able to do very much sometimes, and you, won't, you probably want to save on your electric bill in that case. Um, so the, the basic idea to solve all these is say, oh, you know, how about instead of doing something unproductive or powering down, I do something else for a while. And this is the, one of the big ideas in currency ever, right? So this is the whole idea of task switching, context switching. Context switching is a is a really good idea that was taken away from programmers. I cannot in Java, even with all the cool stuff we did in 166, I cannot in Java say, hey, Mr. CPU, how about you do some garbage collection with my thread right now? Because I'm not doing anything interesting. Work stealing, micro scheduling is, um, is one of those uh, good ideas of concurrency. Um, especially as in, the, in the ages of, of multiprocessors. Work stealing is, uh, is a terrific idea and doesn't have a home. We couldn't do very much with it. It's, it's one of those sort of truths about concurrent programming that's hard to exploit. Um, and, um, and further, when you try to sort of think about how this influences how, how you design things, and one of the reasons why weight-free algorithms are, are, are great is that they get rid of another big unknown in the equation. It's a, in concurrent programs, it's really a bad idea to wait for the future actions of things that may never happen. Because <laughs> right? they may never happen. 
and stud lock and all sorts of bad things.